What's up Laravel developers, it's Dari here and I hope that you're having a great day. In this video, I want to dive into gates. Now before I continue on with this video, I want to quickly let you know that you can support the channel through a Patreon, which is linked in the description down below. You'll get some pretty cool benefits such as a private Discord group where everyone is helping each other out and you can decide the next video series that I'm going to make through Prolls. So if you're interested to join, the link is in the description down below. In the last video, we touched on authorization a lot. Just like any other application, we pretty much concluded that it allows a user to authorize in your application. You can basically have control of what they are allowed to do. In Laravel, you can use gates to determine if a user is authorized to perform a given action. So instead of adding a lot of codes and see through if statements if a user has been set, you can use gates. Now the auth service provider is located inside the app folder. You can find a folder called providers right here. And in here, you can see a file called auth service provider. So let's open it. We need the boot method. Now, whenever you do something inside the boot method, you're basically calling methods on the auth vacate. And before we dive into our gate, we need to add a new column to our table users because we need to check if a user is an admin or not. Now, we obviously don't want to roll back to lose data. So if we go to the CLI, go to the other tab and perform a PHP artisan make me a migration called add is admin underscore two underscore users space double dash table is users. So we're basically creating a new migration because we want to add a new column to the table users. Hit enter. All right, it's creating the migration. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code database folder and it's obviously the last one. And as you can see right here, we have a new table. Well, not a new table, a new migration for the table users. In here, we could basically say table, create me a Boolean called is admin, and the default value is zero. Now let's save it and close it off. Hop back to the CLI, perform PHP artisan migrate. And as you can see, the add is admin to user has been migrated. Now, if we go to MySQL, let's perform select everything from the table users. Let me zoom out. You can see that a is admin has been added right here, but it's actually pretty small for you. Before we define our gate, we need to have a new page to see if a user is an admin or not. So let's define the route first. Let's go to our home controller. Right below our index method, let's create a public function private method. Let's return a view of private. Save it. Let's create a view. So inside our views folder, create a new file called private.blade.php. And let's create an h1 in here. And let's say private screen if is admin has been set to true. Save it. Close it off. And the last thing that we need to do is to define a route. So let's go to the web.php file. At the top, let's pull in our home controller. So use app backslash HTTP backslash controllers backslash home controller. Save it. Let's go down. Let's create a new route under the welcome route. Say route colon colon get to forward slash private. Let's pass in a second param of the controller. So I'm home controller colon colon class comma single quotes and search for the method called private. Save it. Let's go back to the browser to test it out. Let's change the endpoint to forward slash private. That was a typo. All right, and as you can see, private screen if is admin has been set to true has been printed out. Right now, we are finally ready to talk about our gate. So let's go back to the auth service provider. At the top, let's open it. And inside the boot method, we need to define our first gate. So let's say gate, colon, colon, define. So we're going to define a new gate. Inside the parentheses of the define method, we need to add some params. Now the first param is the key. And this needs to be a string that makes sense to what you're going to do. We're going to check if a admin is set. And then the admin can only enter that specific page. So in single quotes, Let's call it admin dash only. Let's add a comma because we have a second param since we need to define the closure. So let's say function parentheses 
curly braces, and let's hit enter. Inside the function that we just created, we need to pass in a param, and it's going to be the object we're going to check for access. So it will be variable user. So given the object that we got, variable user, we can check whether a user is a admin or not. So right inside of our gate, we could basically perform a if statement, where we're going to check if the user is admin is equal to one. Now, like I said, and I'll repeat myself once again, we defined a Boolean in our database, so we're going to get back one or zero. You can obviously write the logic however you want, but at the moment, let's keep it like this. Now, the closure of our return value needs to be a Boolean. Now, if the user is a admin, we want to return true, since the one that we're checking is true. Out of the if statement, we want to return false because it's not true. If we save it and go back to the browser and refresh it, you can see that it still works since we still need to do something inside our controller. We need to tell our controller to listen to the gate. So let's do that. Let's go to our home controller. We need to pull in our gate first. So let's say use illuminate backslash support backslash vacates backslash gate. Save it. Let's go down to our private method because right here, we need to check if the gate is allowed. So let's perform an if statement. And inside the if statement, we're going to check if gate, colon, colon, allows, which is a method, parentheses. Allows method accepts two params. The first one is the gate name that we have defined in our odd service provider. So admin only. Well, let's copy it. Paste it in single quotes. Now the second param is the actual logged in user. And like you probably know, you can grab that with odd, parentheses, access operator, user. If a user is allowed, let's return a view of private. Now make sure that you remove the second return value. If a gate is not allowed, we need to return something as well. And what I want to return is a abort 403. If we save it and refresh the page, you can see that we're being hit with a forward tree. And this is happening because we haven't set the is admin inside our database. So let's change that. Let's go to iTerm. Let's say update users set is admin equal to one, where ID is equal to one. So code with Dari has ID number one. Hit enter. Let me zoom out. Let's select everything from users again. And as you can see, the is admin boolean has been set to one. Now let's go back to the browser. Let's refresh the page. And as you can see, we are allowed to see this page. Next to the allow method that I just showed you inside our controller, we could also perform a denies method. So let's replace it. We will check if the gate denies admin dash only. Save it. Go back to the browser. Refresh it. And well, we have been hit with a 403 because it's not being denied, but it's allowing us. The denies method is pretty much the same as saying gate colon colon allows, but adding an explanation mark right in front of it. So it's not true. Save it, refresh the page, and it's still a 403. This example was pretty simple, but this should open a lot of opportunities for you guys if you want to create an application with multiple roles. What I recommend is creating something like an enum that will interact with different roles like admin, creator, user, and so on. Later on when I create a project, I will show you how you could work with multiple roles inside an application. But for now, this was it for this video. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up, and if you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button.